Now, in this next thing, we're going to talk about tetrad analysis uh, with linked genes and how you measure the genetic distance between those two linked genes. So again, going back to our scenario in which we have uh, two haploid strains, uh, big A, big B crossed with uh, little a, little b. Um, the genes are linked, so what we would then sort of show if we wanted to draw uh, the chromosomes as they're about to uh, ready to segregate away from uh, each other in meiosis 1, um, we would then, of course, put big A here, big B, big B here, um, little a, little a, little b, little b, all right? Now, um, in the case of linkage, remember we talked about how parental diatypes are much more frequent than non-parental diatypes. And the reason that's the, the case is because the only way in which you produce non-parental diatypes is if you have a crossover right here, right? And you also have, say, for example, a crossover right here, right? So you, this is the classic four-strand double, right? And it's because now both of these big A's are both now associated with little b's, and that's the only way you produce non-parental diatypes. But let's think about the other scenarios that are possible here with regard to single crossovers and the frequency at which things are generated. Right. All right, so what type of uh, tetrad is produced by a single crossover? All right, well then this of course would produce Um, a tetratype because you would then have this particular combination of big A, big B, little a, little B, and then little a, big B, and then big uh, a, little b. Now, um, when we talk about double crossovers, there are different types of possibilities. Um, one obviously type of double crossover that you can happen is a two strand double. All right, a two strand double is just, of course, going to happen in this particular fashion. Now, what type of tetrad does a two-strand double produce? Well, when two strands are involved in the double crossover, essentially you've made that crossover invisible, right? So big A, big B, little a, little b is one uh, set of the four haploid products. But now in this particular case, big A, you go down, but then you go back up. So then, of course, this will also produce a big A, big B genotype. Likewise, this will produce a little a, little b genotype. So a two-strand double crossover, okay, will produce parental diatypes. All right. Let's think about other ways in which you can uh, do double crossovers. Now, there's the one that we just talked about a moment ago. Okay. There's the four-strand double crossover. Four-strand. Right. And there's only one way to make a four-strand, and basically in which you have, say, for example, a crossover here. And then you have to have a crossover among the remaining ones. One sort of thing I need to remind everybody about in this particular situation is sometimes people say, well, why don't you put a crossover like here, for example. Just remember, the crossovers are only, only occur among the homologs. When you have crossovers on, between sisters, well, it's sort of not really a crossover because it's invisible. Um, in meiosis, there may be a few crossovers or uh, repairs that happen off of a sister, but we think they're pretty rare because the, homol the homologous chromosome is favored. Uh, in the second process. All right. So a four-strand double crossover would produce, as we said before, a non-parental diatype. Right. So let's imagine another type of crossover, all right, which we're going to call a three-strand double. Right. Three-strand double. All right. So I've already said that our crossover has to happen there. So now the question is, is how can you produce another uh, crossover among uh, three strands? And it turns out there are actually two ways that this can happen. And for that reason, it turns out that the frequency of three strand doubles is about twice the frequency of both the four strand doubles and the two strand doubles, because there's only one way for either of those to happen. The one way for a three strand double to happen is if we pick this chromosome here to participate in the additional crossover. And of course, it has to cross over in this direction because this is the homologous chromosome. So that's one way to produce a three strand double. Right? Another way to produce a three strand double would be, for example, 
if the other one, right, I said that this one participated in the crossover. Now I'm going to say, no, this one participated in the crossover. All right, so it goes like that, right? Because if you say, I'm going to pick that of those two, there's only one option. It has to go to the other homolog. If it went to this one, it would be a two-strand double. So this is a way that you include that third chromatin in this double crossover. All right. So what type of tetrad does this particular scenario produce? Okay. Well, we won't worry about both scenarios because they're essentially uh, reciprocals of one another. But again, I do want to point out that twice as many three-strand doubles happen as two-strand doubles and four-strand doubles. And so the way that you uh, uh, figure these genotypes out is, again, as I say, uh, follow the yellow brick chromatid. So you're going to start off with here, big A, which is the way that this centromere is going to go. And it's going to come down here, and it's going to be little b that it's linked to big A, little b. All right, so now what about this one here, OK? So this is big A. You go down here, right? You cross over, but then you cross over again. And you can think about this is a double crossover that this one's been involved with. And so it, of course, then will be basically uh, no, show no evidence of being crossed over with respect to the linkage of big A and big B. Big A, go down, come back up, big B. All right. What about this little guy right here? All right. Well, little A, go up, but now just straight across the big B. So little A, big B. And then this is the remaining chromatin that did not participate in crossing over little a, little b. And what type of tetrad is this? This is a tetratype. Okay. So the tetratypes, when you produce, uh, when you have two crossovers, are produced by the three strand doubles. And remember, the tetratypes are also produced by the single crossovers. And now, in the next one, I'm going to show you a way to count these up to give you genetic distance between A and B.